everybody, Steve Jensen here, Fish Hunts Guide Service. Uh, just gonna do a little fall, late fall fishing here on the Chippewa Flows with my good buddy Pete Rich, and uh, we're gonna go through some of our basics, uh, some of the tactics, techniques, and some of the rigging that we use uh, to uh, have success this time of year. Um, typically, we're running uh, kind of a softer rod than most guys would realize. I like the St. Croix Premier. It's actually a glass and graphite composite rod. Um, it's an eight foot heavy action, one to eight ounce. Um, and this rod has a little bit more flex to it uh, for hook setting, especially when it gets colder, when the temperatures get below that freezing. Uh, you don't have to worry about graphite breaking and we found that these rods are excellent for what we're doing. Um, I run a uh, Shumway Easy, uh, what, what do they call that? Clip, clip and, and go. go. The old clip and go. Um, and I do modify mine a little bit. Um, I actually tie and crimp and I put on slightly heavier hooks. And then we also just use that stringy snap, so I think Pete's shown you in the past where you can just uh, switch out from trolling to live bait very, very simply. And then the other thing that I add in is a little bit of weight. Um, here I'm using a bead chain keel type sinker. Uh, rubber core sinker on the leader will work. Uh, there's other any kind of a modification in order to add some weight to it. Typically we're running one to three ounces of weight depending on the depth and the time of the season. As we get later, later in fall, these fish drop deeper and deeper in the water column. It may take up to two ounces, three ounces to get them down and keep them vertical. Um, so that's the basic uh, rigging. Uh, we're gonna rig a sucker up here quick, guys, and show you how I do that. And honestly, the cool thing about this clip and go rig is how easy it is to rig them up. Um, typically, we're running, you know, what I would call a large, medium-sized sucker in that, you know, 15, 16-inch range. Uh, once we do get a hold of them like that, I just spread that clip open. One goes in each nostril. I like to push it through, make sure you break that cartilage. And now I have a hook for each side. And I usually bend one over, and that's the hook that you want to use to attach. And what I'll typically do is clear away a few scales and then grab that meat. And the key here is to grab just enough skin to hold that hook in place, but you don't want to bury it in. So it pops out. Now when a muskie grabs it, they'll always grab them like a dog with a bone when they initially make their strike. They'll carry it around for a certain amount of time. This allows us to set the hook as soon as we determine which way they're going. All right, the other key aspect for this late fall fishing, guys, is to incorporate a line, a line counting reel into your setup. Um, when I'm fishing suckers shallow uh, early fall in the spring, it's usually not required because I'm fishing in very shallow. But when the fish are in that 20 to 30 foot range, this allows me to set that sucker within a foot or two of the bottom, which is often very key to getting strikes and allows me to have very um, exacting um, determination of where that you know sucker is in relation to the bottom. And I can also adjust it to the contours as we go. Some days the fish are a little bit higher on the break, sometimes they're a little bit lower. Uh, having that line counter allows you to be very, very precise. So that's another cool thing to have. I just use these old Daiwa sea lines, but any good line counting reel will work. Uh, these reels have literally caught hundreds of muskies and are still working today, so um, excellent product. And hopefully we'll hear that clicker going here shortly. Well, as the fish push deeper and deeper as we get in this late fall period, obviously we like to do a little bit of casting while we're pulling our suckers, but the other thing that I do a lot, especially when you get into this November time period, is vertical jigging. And there's really two baits that I use. Uh, the Fuzzy Dud is, does it is the primary one. It was created by a local guide, uh, Fuzzy Shumway. And uh, really it's basically a large blade bait. It would be very similar to a head and sonar or a similar style bait that guys use for walleyes. Just a magnum sized version. Uh, works very well in deep water and I can literally fish this in any depth of water that I want and fish it vertically which is very important when those fish are relating very tight to structure. So a lot of times I'm jigging this bait basically at that convergence where the break falls to the bottom and you have that very tight contour. You can literally work the suckers along that range and also vertically jig in that very same zone. And a lot of times if you don't get bit on the jig, you will draw fish to the boat, again creating a tension, drawing fish up to your suckers and you'll get sucker bites that you don't realize. But many days we get hit on the fuzzy does it as well. And uh, it's kind of a boring presentation but it's a good way to fill in the day. And uh, it is very effective. Um, the one thing that I do is I'll drop her down, I'll hit bottom, but then I want to crank about two cranks up. You don't want to be bouncing bottom continuously, but you want to be continuously checking where bottom is. And I generally want to be in that two to four foot range above bottom. Um, these fish are generally relating more to the bottom this time of year than they do any other time of year. But you also don't want to be snagging up a lot. 
Uh, the other thing to know about jigging is to know your bottom very well in the areas you choose to do this. Um, it's not a presentation that I recommend doing around a lot of deep cribs or deep stump fields because you will snag a lot more often. Um, but once you learn how to read that bottom, keep the bait just a little bit above it, um, you can do very well with it. You'll notice that I'm using about a two to four foot sweep and then I'm following that jig down on a tight line. I don't want to jig it and then leave a big loop of slack. I want to jig, follow it down on a tight line. The bite will usually come at the top or at the bottom as you're just about to start ripping it up again. You'll either feel weight or feel that tap. If you feel anything on the jig, just like those plastic baits or rubber baits, set the hook because anything weird can be the signal of a fish trying to grab it. Well guys, there's a lot of different uh, casting presentations that I like to incorporate while we're doing the late fall fishing. Uh, obviously a lot of the bites come primarily on the live bait. But we're always throwing some, uh, some lures and usually either throwing and or jigging. Um, the tube is one of those lures that I will use in that late fall period. Um, it's a deeper running bait that has an awesome dead fish gliding action. And in fact, uh, my biggest tournament win, which is a $50,000 win in the World Muskie Tour Championship, was one on these red October tubes. And the 10 inch is my favorite. It actually has a little bit faster, a little bit quicker action than the 12 incher. And for me, it seems like I trigger more strikes with that. Um, but both will work, especially this time of year. Sometimes that larger profile can be preferred as well. Uh, this is a Team Rhino Outdoors walleye color, and you, as you can tell, this one's been uh, nibbled on a few times. Um, the cool thing about these rubber baits, just like a bulldog or a bondi bait or any other rubber bait, uh, I just use a torch to, to weld those cuts back well, once you get hit a few times. Um, use that torch to seal up those holes to keep them going for a little bit longer. Uh, ultimately, though, they will get chewed up. Uh, with the tubes, I like a nice long cast. And we're obviously fishing much deeper water this time of year, so the presentation slows. And with the tube, it's usually more of a sweep and reeling up your slack. And then I will change my sweep direction, which a lot of times will make that lure dart in the complete opposite direction. So it's quite erratic. And as you can see, it comes in nice and deep at the boat. And the bite will almost always come on that pause. So as I'm sweeping, you'll sweep, you do that pause, you'll either feel like you hit a, a tree, you'll feel heavy weight, or you'll feel the rod just about get ripped out of your hand. If you feel anything weird, set the hook as hard as you can. And then the key is just to work it to the depth that's appropriate that you're working. So I can work this bait literally from five feet down to 30 feet, or just by the speed of my retrieve, the length of my pauses, and how long I let that thing dart down. Then the other key is to throw in plenty of good pauses, but I always do a nice one right as I'm coming into my figure eight. I call it the death pause. Uh, works on bulldogs, works on lots of other lures, but it's very, very effective with the tube. A lot of the bites on the tube will come boat side. And it's usually when you give it that quick sweep up, let it hang right at the boat, and then hopefully it'll get nailed. Hey guys, another casting presentation that I do like to incorporate during this late fall period um, is glide baits. And, and you'll have days, you know, obviously we're targeting much steeper breaks this time of year. Stuff that will, you know, break from that 5 foot range all the way down into that 25 and 30 foot range. Most days you're going to find those fish relating to the base of the break or down deep on the side. But you certainly have days where those fish will move up the side of the break and actually get on top sometimes. When I find those situations, whether it be a, you know, a high bluebird day like we have today or a warming trend, um, I will oftentimes check those areas and glide bait is usually the best tool for doing that. Uh, the Hellhound is certainly my favorite. I use both varieties, the standard Hellhound which has no squirrely tail and then the squirrely Hellhound which does have that rubber tail which gives it a little more action. And honestly I try them both on any given day. It's really interesting in that the fish will seem to prefer one over the others on any given day but I've done very well on both. Um, just something to incorporate when those fish might be in that shallower position. Uh, the key with glide baits guys is to incorporate lots of pauses. Most people get too rhythmic and they move them too fast. This time of year you want to move pretty slowly and you want to throw in lots of good pauses. So I'm throwing it out, letting her sink just a little. And that's just a gentle tap with a long pause. And I'll usually do it really erratic. So I'll do pop two, three, four times, let it hang, pop, pop, let it hang, pop, 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 let it hang. So you're not getting too rhythmic with it. And that always incorporating those long pauses and working it slowly back to the boat. And again, you always want to do what I call that death pause. And 
I'll usually do it right about five or ten feet from the boat here, just to give any following fish that extra chance. And you'll see how those baits glide side to side. Uh, the one thing that I do recommend when throwing glide baits is to put a straight wire leader in front of them. Uh, this is made by Stealth Tackle. And the reason I like that straight wire is it creates a pendulum, a fulcrum, for that lure to swing. And you get a much nicer gliding action. It's a lot easier to incorporate that gliding action when you have that straight wire in front. The other thing that I use is a much shorter rod. So this is a seven foot six extra heavy. It's called the Jerk. It's the Legend Tournament Series made by St. Croix. And I like the Jerk because it has that short rod, that stiffness, which allows you to manipulate the little lure a little bit quicker and also allows you to incorporate those pauses. With glide baits, if your rod is a little bit longer, it gets a little bit tedious and you don't get quite the same action. So I've certainly settled on the jerk. It's my favorite rod for throwing glide bait. Well guys, another one of probably the mainstay casting presentation that I rely on this late fall period when we're running the live bait is a pounder bulldog. A pounder is really not new to the muskie industry, but uh, extremely, extremely effective, especially here late in the season. That larger profile really seems to trigger strikes and draw strikes from fish that uh, maybe would be reluctant to, you know, charge a smaller bait. Um, the one thing that I do do is keep both the weighted pounders and the shallow pounders in the boat. And, and the reason that I do that, even though we're fishing very deep water, a lot of times the drop rate or how fast that bait sinks is what, you know, triggers the strikes from fish. And, and we'll very, you know, many days I'll have one of each. And, and with that shallow pounder, we can still work it deep. It just has a lot slower presentation. It's a lot slower fall. And there's days, especially late, late fall, where that can be the trigger. But probably 75% of the time I'm running that weighted version, um, getting that slow pull pause. Um, usually a little bit longer pulls, not quite ripping in like you would do in the summertime um, and definitely want to put in those long pauses those extended pauses that's almost always where the bite's going to come so the pounder bulldog is definitely one that we are going to be throwing a lot especially in that late fall period i like to keep a very heavy thumb when i'm casting all bulldogs especially as you're laying that bait down by controlling that speed of that spool going out I'll actually slow it down and stop it and it'll lay that bulldog down nice and flat and you get a lot less foul cast with them. And in the late fall period, we're slowing that ripping down. It's more of a long sweep and then gaining up your slack. Sometimes we'll give her the double pump, but just remember to incorporate that pause. You always, always finish with a strong figure eight. And I can't tell you how many times, guys, that in this late fall period we'll have fish engage these baits, they follow them up to the boat, and I will manually actually lead them down around by the sucker. In many days, I can bring a following fish up to the boat. It's not gonna bite the bait, but I can take it right to the sucker, and a lot of times we can clean them up on that live bait. Nice long pause, heavy thumb, laying it down. And this time of year, we'll usually count it down a little bit because we're fishing deeper water, that 15 to 30 foot range. So I'll maybe count it down five to 10 to get a little bit deeper in the water column. The other thing to remember when fishing rubber of any kind, and especially on these pounders, guys, huge, huge, huge hook sets. When you get bit, set that hook physically as hard as you can. In a lot of lures, I won't recommend doing a second set, but the Pounder Bulldog is one that I often will do a second set, or I'll tighten it up and just make sure that I had good contact. When they grab these baits, they can grab it and physically hold onto it with their teeth, or if you don't shift that bait through their mouth, you're not going to get a good hook up. And that being said, even with monster hook sets, we're going to miss some fish on the Pounders, but it's still worthwhile because they do get bit in this late fall. The final lure category that I want to cover here, guys, for this late fall casting presentation would be the swim baits. Uh, this here is a swimming dog. Um, swim baits have really come onto the scene here in the last couple of years, and they're quite effective in this very late fall period. Well, the key here is a slow, straight retrieve. Um, I use them in a couple different situations. So I'll use them on those brakes, and you can literally follow the contour of the brake, starting them shallow, and just by adjusting the speed of your retrieve, you can literally follow that swim bait right down the brake, along the base, and then you bring it back up. Um, the key is just a slow straight retrieve and I usually put in just a couple of pauses or pops throughout the course of that retrieve. Uh, the other situation where they worked really well and have excelled are lakes that have ciscos um, during the cisco spawn in that early November period which a lot of our lakes here in northern Wisconsin and northern Minnesota have. 
Um, over the last few years, we've noticed quite a bit of effectiveness of these paddle tail lures as opposed to bulldogs, maybe because it's something a little bit different, a little bit more subtle vibration, uh, but it's certainly something to try and certainly something to incorporate that can be very, very effective in that late fall period. And you got it with this, pretty simple retrieve. Basically, your bread and butter, straight retrieve. And again, I'll kind of mimic my speed of my retrieve to match that lure to the contour of the depths that I'm fishing. So if I'm starting out high, I'll work it slow and then basically run it right down those breaks. Every now and then, I'll give her just a slight speed up and a little bit of a pause. Really the key here is just be gentle, slow, methodical. Let the vibration of the lure do the work for you.